In today's agronomy update, I'm going to discuss anhydrous ammonia applications and potential injury to corn seedlings. In 2023, we witnessed several cases of anhydrous burn to young corn plants. If dry weather and dry soil conditions continue, it's likely we will see more injury this year. When anhydrous ammonia is injected into the soil, the ammonia gas expands until it reacts with water to form ammonium or attaches to soil particles. This area of expansion is referred to as the retention zone. The size of the retention zone depends mostly on the soil type and moisture content of the soil. On average, the retention zone is approximately four inches from the point of injection. When the ammonia reacts with water to form ammonium, the soil pH in that retention zone increases. Studies have documented pH levels above 10 in the retention zone this, this is important because as pH increases above 7, free ammonia is present and can lead to seedling damage or what we call anhydrous burn. The pH returns to normal, normal levels and ammonium levels are reduced as nitrification occurs within that retention zone. The highest concentration of ammonia and biggest risk to the seedling is usually within a couple inches of the injection point. As mentioned, the size of the retention zone is mostly dependent on the soil type and moisture content of the soil. Sandy soils will have a larger retention zone than soils with a lot of clay. Dry soils can also allow the ammonia to move further in the soil. If the knife track is not properly sealed, ammonia can escape and be lost to volatilization. The same can occur if applying when the soil is too wet and the knife track stays open. The first sign you may notice are strange patterns across the field. In this picture, you can see areas of reduced growth and stand losses are evident. Here's another angle from the same field. And in less extreme cases, symptoms may only show up in certain areas of the field or you only see symptoms on scattered plants throughout the field. Above ground symptoms include rolled leaves, off colored or grayish plants and stunted growth. The plant on the bottom is not exhibiting any symptoms. You can see in this picture that the three plants in the middle are showing symptoms while the plants on either side are fine. The roots of the three plants in the middle have come into contact with the retention zone from the anhydrous ammonia application. If you dig the plants up, you can see the difference in root growth between the plants exhibiting symptoms on the left and normal root growth on the right. You can tell by the lack of root development in the injured plant that the concentration of ammonia was very close to the seed in this scenario. The lack of root de development in dry soil conditions are causing drought-like symptoms. In a normal year with adequate moisture, no symptoms would be, would be visible. A few recommendations when applying anhydrous ammonia to prevent seedling damage. Remember the greater, greater the distance from the seed and the greater the time between fertilizer application and planting, the less, risk, the less risk of injury. In a normal year, the rule of thumb is to wait at least seven days after anhydrous application to plant corn. Wait longer if soils are dry and placing anhydrous near the seed. In 2023, injury was observed in fields where anhydrous was applied the previous fall. So in extreme cases like last year's drought, no amount of time was enough. With dry conditions, consider decre decreasing the rate of anhydrous and applying more in season after you can evaluate crop stands and overall yield potential. Do not try to plant on top of the anhydrous track. Apply anhydrous at an angle or offset the rows if you can. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out or contact your local Pioneer Sales representative. Thank you. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.